Hello, my name is Nadia Bongelli and today we will be prepping and trimming the Bedlington Terrier. And we have maybe the Bedlington Terrier right here with us. She's a little scruffy and needs a haircut. And I just wanted to start off today's course by just talking about the Bedlington Terrier, a couple of the key points about them before we jump into the trip. So I'm gonna get her stacked up for you guys. So the Bedlington Terrier hails from Bedlington, England and was originally called the Rothbury Terrier. Fun fact. They are unlike a lot of other terriers in terms of their body shape. They are also one of the three, technically four soft-coated terriers, if you count the Chesky Terrier. Um, so they are built rather uniquely where they have this very distinct arched top line, a rochi top line, very deep and well uh, filled in um, underline here. Nice long legs. We have our little whippy rat tail and a beautiful long slender head, which isn't untypical of many terrier breeds. They also have very big teeth. So the Bedlington Terrier was built for speed and flexibility. Uh, it is said that in the sort of like dawn of their existence, Bedlingtons and Danny Dimont Terriers were once very related. And you can see that relation with the linty soft texture of the Bedlington coat and the top nut of the Dandy Dinmont are very similar. It said that the dogs that were selected to become the Bedlington Terrier were bred with uh, whippet-like dogs, and that's where you get this unique shape from. So they call them a life fast terrier in the breed standard. They're built for speed and flexibility again. If you, you can actually bend these guys, I don't know if she'll do it, but you can see that they can easily turn around and fold in half almost, which is kind of crazy. Um, so these guys will course. So they'll chase game over grassy surfaces, hills, stuff like that. They can run very fast. They'll also dig and they will go to ground, which is really cool. So we have our girl here. I just wanna show you guys her top line up here and her tuck up. I just wanted you to illustrate all these things. And these things are important because they're very important to the overall trim of the dog. And I just wanna talk about the soft linty texture of the hair. It's very unique. It's not curly like a poodle coat. The breed standard says that it stands up well from the skin, so you don't want coat that's laying flat against the skin. And the linty texture really does feel like dryer lint. So next time you change um, the lint catch thing in your dryer, you'll, you'll feel bed linked in hair. The breed standard also says there's a distinct mixture of soft and coarse hairs. So on a correct Bedlington coat, when you look at the look at the coat, you'll notice with your linty soft coat, there's gonna be uh, some darker, coarser hairs mixed into that. These guys are born darker. Um, so you have your colors, uh, you have blue and liver. You also have blue and tan and liver and tans. The, the blues are born black and the livers are born dark brown and they'll clear as they get older. She's a blue and this is a nice color, nice clear clearing color for a blue but you'll also see that on the body, it's a little bit darker than the legs. The breed standard does say that the breed will dilute and lighten and fade with age, but they should retain a little bit of color, especially on the body. Um, the head and the legs, we allow a bit more for that sort of like white color. On a liver, they'll appear like a very, very just faint hint of liver on the, the more pigmented parts of the body. Um, and they almost look like pink in the sunlight, which is really cute. So you'll see that she's very overgrown. We're gonna give her a very big overhaul today. One side, I'll be hand scissoring the whole dog like I would do for show. And on the other side, I'll be using tools like my clippers to set in the pattern for people who aren't as experienced or aren't as confident setting in a pattern just with the scissors. I'll also show you how to block in the trim with clippers. The equipment that we will use today will consist of, we'll use some clippers, especially 40 blades uh, for the clipper work on the face and the tail and the ears. Um, we're going to be using mostly scissors, combs, scissoring sprays, and chalk and cholesterol for her legs. The clipper work on these guys is going to go from this top corner of your ear where your clipper work is, and we're going to go right to the corner of the eye. And you can see my past clipper work has grown out. And then we're going to take our clipper work from the corner of the eye to the corner of our mouth. The toes are long, um, and they are an oval in shape. And you'll notice a hair foot that will be on pretty much almost all of your hound breeds. But the biggest indicator is when you hold the foot upside down and squeeze these toes together, look how long that foot looks. So your poodle foot would look more like this, compact. So the reason I'm telling you this is when we groom our Bedlingtons, we're never gonna have that short stubby nail on these guys because they are a coursing terrier. You do want 
to have that a bit of a longer nail for traction and naturally their foot's gonna accommodate that. The breed standard says that they're not to have, they're not to exceed one inch of, one inch in length of the coat on the body. So this coat should never be more than one inch long on the body. And historically, they are trimmed quite short. So we're gonna be wanting to leave probably about a quarter of an inch or slightly less on her shoulders and rib cage. So when you're finished scissoring these guys, or in general, you want to make sure only uh, the cutting blade, like what your thumb is controlling, is moving your scissor. I mean, a bit of a wobble is fine. I do have a bit of a wobble, but we're not going for that. And we're gonna work slowly and moving along the dog. Lock up your shoulder. Make sure your dog is awake. Wake up. And I like to actually lock up my shoulder, my elbow, and my wrist, and I'll move my entire body. And that's just how I like to make sure that I'm still. And always watch what you're doing. Don't look away. Thank you so much for joining both of us today while we gave maybe a haircut. I really hope you guys learned a lot and enjoyed watching the Bedlington Terrier trim. I know it's a bit of a intricate and difficult trim to master, but I look forward uh, to you guys maybe giving some feedback or getting in touch. My contact information will be in the notes for this course. And I think maybe just wanted to say goodbye. Say bye, maybe. <laughs> say bye. Hey everyone. Thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below. Let us know what you thought. And as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content. And we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. That way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.